Good morning. It is 10 o'clock. Getting a little bit of a late start, but that's okay. I thought that'd be kind of interesting just to show y'all what it's like to be a phlebotomy student. Basically, if you don't know what a phlebotomist is, they're the person who, like, take your blood and test it. So we work with needles and tubes and stuff. Um, this is gonna be a little weird to film because unlike my other day in the life as a student, I go to class late at night and I'm not allowed to film in the classroom. I'm not gonna set a camera up in the classroom because that's uh, it's actually not allowed. We're gonna be sticking each other with needles and there's a bit of like a privacy issue with that too. So we're just gonna, you know, take this day as we go along. So come with me and I'll show you what I do, my day-to-day -day routine when I'm going to phlebotomy class. And as always, the first step to getting your morning started is to get ready by brushing your hair and brushing your teeth. Even though I'm a phlebotomist, I still like to have those pearly white teeth. I mean, just look at that adorable smile. I mean, come on. You wanna have good teeth for your patients when you smile at them, you make them feel comfortable. And now the most important meal of the day, brunch. It's like 10.30 at this point, I think. And we're gonna have some nice tea, mango passion fruit tea, one of my favorites. And we're also gonna have the finest, exquisite cuisine, an Eggo chocolate chip waffle. While I'm waiting for my tea and waffle to cool off, I've been working on this dance to like remember the steps, like to get a good stick. It kind of goes like this. So first, you got the tourniquet, okay? And then you're looking for the vein, all right? After you find the vein, you remove the tourniquet. You clean the spot, put on your gloves, then you put the tourniquet back on, you find the vein again, you stick it, then you remove the tourniquet, you remove the needle, you cap it, you put the cotton ball and you hold pressure. I'm gonna have to put it together, but yeah, that's, that's, that's all I got right now. Dance coming soon to TikTok. The phlebotomy dance. So after that little dance demo, I usually sit outside and enjoy breakfast with my dogs. It, the weather is still nice outside and we like to enjoy it before that cold weather hits. I also usually have a standoff with my dog Misty over my food. Oh, I'm not going to give you my waffle. I'll give you a tiny piece of my waffle. There you go. For that by I think 3.30 is time for a shower. And then after my shower I try to drink at least two bottles of water before my class and I brush up on some homework and to practice for my national exam. And that's coming up and I'm terrified of taking that test. I go downstairs around 4 to make some coffee for tonight's class. We're usually there for a long bit of time, especially when we're sticking one another, so you gotta stay awake and alert for that. I did that with barely spilling anything. I am proud of myself. After I get that ready, it's time to dry my hair, and that takes a long time to dry. After that, I gotta change into my scrubs, and I'm gonna put on a little fashion show. And look at those scrubs. I think I look fabulous. I've got my white shoes. It is phlebotomist couture. Boom, boom, get it, get it. We all look fancy in these scrubs. And then it's off to class. So a bit of an interesting night. Uh, one of the pieces of equipment in our lab had a short circuit or something. So it kind of like started burning. So we had to leave our room and we couldn't get sticks in tonight, so we just had to do homework and stuff. But basically what we went over tonight were capillary sticks, how to, you know, how to do them, which we've been doing that for a few weeks now, but we just went over the procedures for like infants, elderly, and sickly people. Um, I'll show you my notes when I get home, but we are all incredibly tired. Thankfully we got out early, and I will see y'all when I am home. Later. Okay, so I just got home. And I am now doing my homework. And basically the homework is just saying three things that we have learned in class. So I just opened my book and as you can see here, we just learned about the main points of draw, which is gonna be the median cubital, which is also known as the basilic. 
we just have to draw from right here because right here on the inner basilic you're gonna have the brachial artery like very very close and for some people this like goes directly over that one so to avoid sticking the artery we just go for the median basilic um, with infants you can only do a heel stick um, I think it's because you can't really see their veins yet so you can only do like a heel stick on where was it right there so this is where you're gonna do the heel stick on infants um, the reason why you don't strike an artery is because if you do, you're going to get blood spurts. So basically, like, once you pull in, like, even in the tube, you don't even have to pull the needle out. But since your artery has the heartbeat, it's going to be, like, doing that in the tube. And once you take it out, it's just going to keep doing it. So you only want to draw venial blood, not arterial. There are going to be some cases where you might be asked to draw arterial. Actually, no, scratch that. I'm tired. <laughs> I just know that you're supposed to draw a venial and the color is actually going to be darker than arterial because arterial is more oxygenated. So yeah, there's there's that little lesson for you tonight. So I hope you enjoy the day in the life of a phlebotomist or day in the life of a phlebotomy student. Not that exciting. Um, it is surprisingly tiring because it's just a lot of information to go through. And yeah, um, so here, here are just some tips. If you are going to go get your blood drawn at some point, I would drink two bottles of water the night before because if you were hydrated, your veins are going to pop, which means it's going to be easier for us to stick you. And if you don't like needles, you only want us to stick once because if we miss, we're going to have to go back in and people who don't like blood or needles, you don't want that. Um, fast before you go in because you need to be at a baseline in order to get like the best accurate results for your test. So just fast for 24 hours, do not drink anything else but water, be hydrated, and if you don't like needles, do not watch, okay? Do not watch. It's, it's, it's going to be bad if you pass out while you're getting your blood drawn. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm sorry if I did not give enough information. I'm hoping that we get to do our sticks next time because that's usually fun. Um, I don't know, I could give you a demonstration because I know how to tie a tourniquet around my arm and like, you know, show you how to find a vein. You know, only stick around for that if you're interested. Um, other than that, I hope to see you all in the next video. And until then, stay safe out there. Later. Okay, so I'm gonna demonstrate how to tie a tourniquet and take blood using my little, you know, happy, angry guy. So I'm going to leave him angry because I don't think that he's too happy about being stuck with a needle. So basically you take your tourniquet and I suggest grabbing it right here because if you do this, then you're going to be able to tie it as tight as a tourniquet needs to go. If you do it this way, it's going to be very loose. So using my little guy here, if you can see him. I'm just gonna turn it around like that. Take this and then fold it. And it should look like that. Yeah, he's not very happy about that. But on someone's arm, that's how it should be. And that way when you're done, you take the thing that you folded and you pull it off. Maybe I can use it on my wrist to show you but it's not going to be very good. So there you go, it's on my wrist. So basically you always want to pull this one because you're going to be pulling up and away from the patient. You don't want to be pulling down towards them, you want to be pulling up and away. And yeah, that's that's how you do it. Okay, a little something that I forgot to do in this tutorial, so I looked up this picture on Google. Basically how you find your vein is that you go into the bend of your elbow on the inside of your arm and you just kind of like feel around in that area. When I mean feel around, I mean like poke. And I mean like press down. Um, you're going to know it's a vein because a vein is going to give you a bounce back. And a tendon, it is not going to bounce back. And a tendon is going to be hard AF. You do not want to strike a tendon. That's going to hurt. Um, how to know if it's an artery? You will feel a pulse. Like you just have to pay attention 
And the best advice I can give you is to not look while you do it, but to literally just rely on your sense of feel. Put everything else out. Do not use your sight. Use your feel. Okay, that's the best advice that I can give you. Other than that, um, if you don't feel a vein and you're pressing very lightly, press harder. Some people have deeper veins while other people have very shallow veins. So each person is going to be different, which means that each person is going to require a different way of locating the vein. That's, that's all from future me. Back to past me with the video. And basically, once you have your tourniquet on and you found the vein, you need to have your things assembled, first of all. Um, I don't have a needle. So basically, you would just take that person's arm and you would hold tension with your thumb. You take your needle. Always do the bevel up because the bevel's facing down. You're going to have a bad time with that. And then you don't jab it, but you just do a quick poke. Because if you do a quick poke, it's not going to hurt as bad. And if you do a quick poke, if you're not deep enough, you can go deeper. But if you think that you're too deep, you can just slightly pull out. And you don't really want to get much of the needle in there. It's like pretty much just like very, very little. Mainly just the bevel part. So when you see the bevel go in, you need to pop your tube. So it's going to be in this little thing. You can either move it with one hand or you can do it with the other. So you can release tension once you get it and then you can just pop it in. If you don't get any blood, you can do the back and forth movement. If you've missed it, you just got to pull out and dispose of the whole thing. So yeah, that's my tutorial. Hope you enjoyed it.